Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an American science fiction disaster film called Geostorm. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The premise of the movie is set in the year 2019, when climate change has peaked at its highest. The world isn't what it used to be because of the changes in ocean pattern, rise in surface temperature, and melting polar ice. Different parts of the world suffer different natural calamities like tsunamis, floods, droughts, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, anti-vax rallies, typhoons, and so on. Cities and countries are destroyed within seconds. The East River swallows Lower Manhattan, and a heat wave kills two million people at once in Madrid. In such conditions, it is clear that no single country can solve the problem on its own. So, the whole world comes together as one to fight nature. The United Nations funds a singular project with the top scientists of the world to create a satellite called Dutch Boy. The scientists work tirelessly, not as representatives of their nations, but of humanity. After all the hard work, they finally find a way to neutralize the storms with a web of thousands of satellites connected to the Dutch Boy satellite. The satellites are meant to deploy countermeasures in specific parts of the world. The countermeasures impact the basic elements of the weather and neutralize it as needed in the area. The project is overseen by scientists from the International Space Station. The mission is successful, and the situation of the world changes within days. The Dutch Boy is programmed and designed by Chief Architect Jake Lawson. He also leads the group of scientists and is the main reason the mission was successful. After the chaos settles, a problem arises when the US government tries to take over the Dutch Boy, claiming it as their own. For this, they will have to get permission from Jake. However, Jake believes that the project doesn't belong to a singular country. Hence, despite being an American, he doesn't accept the offer. Because of this, the officials fire him from his post and employ his younger brother Max instead. Max had known about the officials' plan to fire Jake and even helped them with it. Jake leaves the office in anger, vowing to never forgive Max. The scene then cuts to three years later. All this time, the Dutch boy has worked its best and has stabilized the Earth's weather. However, one day, the US Army in Afghanistan finds a tribe in the middle of the desert. To their utmost surprise, the otherwise hot place is freezing. It looks as if a cold frost has frozen the specific area and its people within seconds. The situation is immediately reported to the US government, and a meeting is held to discuss the matter. Outside the meeting hall, Max meets his fiance, Sarah Wilson, who is also a US Secret Service agent. At the meeting, the president and secretaries declare that a malfunction in the Afghan satellite linked to the Dutch boy was the reason for the cold frost. Instead of taking responsibility, they discuss how they can keep the incident secret so they won't be criticized. This enrages Max, who actually cares for people's lives. He proposes to send an engineer to the International Space Station who can report the problem to the US. That way, they can make sure it won't happen again in the future. The US Secretary of State, Leonard Deckham, asks Max to appoint Jake on the matter because he is the only one who knows the Dutch boy like the back of his hand. Max is a little skeptical of the idea, but goes to meet Jake immediately. Meanwhile, in the space station, the scientists and astronauts replace the Afghan satellite. One astronaut is appointed to collect all the data from the old satellite and check it to see what is the problem with it. He collects the data from the satellite in a hard drive and hides it, almost as if someone has ordered him to do so. Right after, he enters an airlock and is trapped inside. The windows break and he is sent flying into space. For the past three years, Jake has been living in Florida where his daughter, Hannah, visits him every weekend. Max arrives at his house and meets Hannah. She informs him that Jake has been making different kinds of machines because his love for engineering never lessened even after being fired. Max then meets Jake, who isn't happy about him visiting Hannah. Max tells him that Dutch Boy is malfunctioning, but Jake confidently claims it is not possible because his creation is flawless. He is apprehensive of the situation, but agrees to return to the space station and check what caused the malfunction. Cut to the Climate Council headquarters in Hong Kong, China. A supervisor from the Dutch Boy program, Cheng Long, is in his office working as usual. The temperature is extremely hot, so Cheng goes to a nearby grocery store and gets some water and eggs. Everyone knows eggs will cool you down. As he returns, he accidentally drops the eggs on the road and sees them being cooked because of the temperature. 
Before he can react, an earthquake hits, and the ground starts spewing hot lava. People panic and run around, trying to save their lives. Cheng quickly gets in his car and drives away, as the road behind him cracks open. Soon, the skyscrapers topple over, and the city is destroyed. Cheng somehow manages to save himself after reaching a bridge with a lower temperature. Somewhere else, Jake sets off for the International Space Station for the first time in three years. The chief scientist and the commander of the station, Oot Fassbinder, welcomes him and introduces him to the rest of the crew. Back on Earth, Cheng calls Max and informs him that he cannot log into China's Dutch Boy database. He believes that someone is trying to keep them from accessing the real reason why the temperature rose that suddenly. Max tries to log in, but even his access is denied, confirming that their database has been hacked. Chang then reveals that if Dutch Boy has an overall system failure, a geostorm will rise on Earth. It will be far worse than the extreme weather conditions they were trying to prevent, as catastrophic weather events will be triggered all over the globe, all at once. A geostorm could potentially end humanity and destroy the Earth for good. Right after the call, a group of foreign men with guns enter Chang's office. Chang manages to hide in time and save his life. The men take his laptop and all the data he had about the Dutch boy malfunction. The following day, Max asks a cybersecurity expert, Dana, to check what is wrong with the database. She immediately finds out that someone has hacked into the mainframe and is deleting weather information. Back on the space station, Jake and his team go through the video footage of the airlock malfunction and find out a drive had stuck to the communication tower at the time of the accident. Jake and Ute spacewalk and retrieve the drive successfully. However, Jack doesn't trust the crew and lies to them, saying that they lost the drive in space. He and Ute secretly go through the database and find out that the satellites were programmed to malfunction over Hong Kong and Afghanistan, but they are not able to find out who did it and why. My money's on Thanos. At the same time, Chang flies to the US to meet Max and tell him everything he heard from the people who barged into his office. But before Chang can get to him, a stranger pushes him into a running car. Max runs to his friend, who is on the verge of death. Before passing away, Chang tells Max something about a project named Zeus. After that, Max is informed about the situation at the space station from Jake, who believes that someone from the highest level of government is in on the satellite malfunctions. Max takes this information to Dana, and the two search for a project named Zeus in the mainframe. They find out that someone is weaponizing Dutch Boy to attack specific cities. It has to be some higher official who has access to the mainframe, but they do not know who. Jake believes that someone has programmed a virus in the Dutch Boy's system through which they can control it. The only way to stop this is to reboot Dutch Boy so the virus can be destroyed. But for that, they will need the president's credentials and they are not in a position to trust him. The brothers now suspect the president to be the one behind all of this. According to Jake, he is using Dutch Boy to destroy the US's enemy nations. Max gets to work on acquiring the president's credentials to stop the geostorm from occurring. However, among the chaos, Jake is reported to of 200 satellite malfunctions. An aggressive hailstorm in Japan kills hundreds. The temperature in Brazil drops, freezing the oceans and people on beaches. The International Space Station is altered of a geostorm that will arrive in one and a half hours. Soon, the space station initiates a self-destruction protocol. Jake and his team had first programmed this protocol to destroy the space station in case it fell to Earth. Now, every scientist has to leave the station and fly back to save their lives. Just then, Jake figures out that one of his teammates, Duncan, is responsible for putting the virus into the Dutch Boys system. The two get into a fight, which ends when Duncan gets sucked into space because of a broken window. Back on Earth, Max is at a presidential speech when the Secretary of State, Leonard, asks him what is wrong. Max tells him everything about the president using the Dutch boy as a weapon. Leonard asks him more about Project Zeus, but Max realizes he never told him about the project. It is then revealed Leonard is the one behind the malfunctions all this time. He wants to take the president's position by blaming the Dutch boy malfunction on the current president. As soon as Max realizes this, Leonard tries to kill him, but the man saves himself and gets to Agent Sarah. The two plan to kidnap the president and take his biometrics, which will reboot the Dutch boy and save the planet. Sarah deliberately causes a shootout, making the guards take the president away for his safety. She then knocks one of them out and takes the president to a car with Max. The couple explains everything to him in the car while they are being chased by Leonard's men. 
Meanwhile, several massive tornadoes hit Mumbai, while a heat wave hits Russia, killing hundreds of people. In the space station, all of the crew gets into a shuttle to return to Earth, but Jake and Ute stay behind, because someone has to manually reboot the program after Max acquires the President's biometrics. In the following scene, Max and Sarah successfully get Leonard arrested. He is still not regretful for killing so many people for his personal gains. After he is arrested, they bring the president to the mission control headquarters. There, the president provides his biometrics and thanks Jake for his sacrifice on a video call. Max realizes that his brother is going to die and apologizes for sending him there in the first place. At last, Jake asks him to take care of his daughter and hurries to reboot the satellite. With only a few seconds left until the geostorm, he and Ute successfully reboot the system and all the natural calamities in the world die down within seconds. The world is finally saved, but Jake and Ute are now in the space station that is about to self-destruct. To save themselves, they get into an old satellite that launches into space without a destination. The two watch the space station explode into pieces while flying away. Fortunately, one of the scientists from the mission control notices their satellite and sends a shuttle to get the two. The shuttle finally attaches to the satellite and returns to the Earth, saving everyone. Cut to six months later, Jake has been reappointed to manage the newly built space station. He and Max have a good relationship now, both as brothers and co-workers. The movie ends as Jake's daughter Hannah narrates that as long as humans remember we share one future, we will survive. Remember everyone, the climate crisis is a real thing, but if we can all just work together, Gerard Butler will save us all. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.